Like this? Okay. I got a question for you. Uh, Fritzante means sparkling? Yeah. Okay, I don't want it. <laughs> uh, so, yesterday in the middle party, I learned that my Italian accent is awful. Uh, but I will try again. Come stai? <laughs> Sounds fine? Uh, I'm Mateusz Herich. I'm from Poland, from Krakow. I work as an Android uh, developer at the base CRM. And I'm a co-organizer of uh, community meetups uh, from Google Developers Group in Krakow and co-organizer of the Droid Conference, which is the biggest Android conference in Poland. Hmm? Oh, I heard a question, but by mistake. Uh, we host like uh, 200 people every year since, uh, since uh, three years. It's organized in December, but if you want to visit Poland it is in December, crack draw is a good reason. And I'm a geek, uh, so what really makes me feel interesting is the stats, is the numbers. Uh, so I got a question for you. How many of you uh, connect to the SQLite in your applications? Okay, and how many of you uh, do the like queries in your app anywhere for anything? Okay, uh, I guess that some, I guess that more people are doing like queries, but since the uh, topic like something is not the way, they are not brave enough to tell this, uh, to tell the truth. Uh, so today's talk will be about search more specifically about the offline search. Uh, and you might ask why? Why do we need the offline search in our Android apps in the first place? Let the backend guys do the job. I will perform a request and they will return me the list of the, of the search entries, easy. On the backend, we go to servers that have uh, infinite number of cores and infinite number of RAMs. So, uh, so search will work much faster than on, on the mobile. But let me tell you the secret. Internet is not everywhere. And it takes time, especially the SSL handshaking. And uh, I hope if you are doing the SSL, uh, if you are doing the HTTP request from your apps uh, that uh, sends some user type data, you are using SSL. So it will take time, of course, for the first request because you might use the keep alive. But still, it takes time. And sometimes it's shitty, right? We are, uh, for example, on the IT conference and internet is not working fine. Uh, it happens a lot, like uh, on uh, the DroidCon, right? And doing an rec doing a online search isn't that easy as it could, as it could uh, uh, be seen, right? So the most naive in the, uh, implementation of the online search, like we are performing the request every single letter, uh, is also the battery drainer for some. Uh, mm, it's also the battery drainer. It kills the battery. Every single request that you perform, but you, uh, you can uh, avoid performing it can be considered as one of those battery drainers that need to be reduced in order to reduce the battery usage. Uh, sure, some, some apps don't need uh, really offline search, especially because they don't expose any content, right? So for example, if we got the uh, app to, uh, for uh, ordering a taxi, there is no is a, not a point in, in uh, investing time in doing the offline search for the taxi ordering app. But if you keep offline content and make user able to view this content when they are offline for some reason or, or uh, the internet is working slow, let your users navigate fast. What do you think? How users, uh, when they got a lot of content in the app, like let's say list of contacts, how they use, uh, how they use the app for, uh, for viewing contacts? How they use people app? How do you use it? How do you use it? You navigate through the list, uh, swipe, swipe down if you got like 500 or contacts. 
No, some of you probably use the fast search mechanism on the right, but sometimes it's not applicable because, for example, content is not sorted alphabetically. Uh, your users will, will use search. This is like the most simple solution and faster solution to find stuff uh, in the application on the device. And did I say fast? How to uh, do the fast full text search on the device that is really poor and, um, because probably many of you support uh, still devices below, for example, API level 14. How many of you support de uh, devices above, uh, below 14? Yeah. Uh, so how on such poor devices make the search experience very fast? Mm. And let me tell you, uh, my story. I work at the CRM system, so users can simply add the contacts to it, add the deals and notes associated with those contacts and deals, and so on and so on. And there is so much content uh, that is available uh, offline, so we decided to invest our time in doing a search. And in 2009, when we started, our biggest clients had like 100 contacts, uh, 50 deals, and 100 notes. Not really a big deal, so uh, our search looked like this. Uh, select something from somewhere uh, where name like wildcard something wildcard. Well, but in 2014, when our clients uh, got like 40k of, uh, of contacts, 20k of deals, and 300k of uh, of other content like notes, it started to get complicated because the search took for them like one minute. Like this query was a total killer for the performance. By the way, they probably, did you hear uh, about this uh, research that one single person uh, can have uh, only like 20 contacts and is not able to maintain more relations uh, with people than 200? It's like, a, have, you, have you heard? Yeah, so they didn't. They, they got like 40K and they're doing fine. <laughs> uh, yeah, and bad performance is sad panda, right? And we do not want to make a panda sad. So to understand what's the problem, we need to understand how like works like. What, why, what makes like so bad in the matter of performance? Uh, do you know indexes on the SQLite? You probably know. So when, according to the docs, uh, SQLite's docs, when uh, SQLite uses indexes in order to perform a query based on the like operator, what do you think? Raise your hand if somebody knows. What the, doc, what the docs are saying about the like, when, when the index is used? Never? This answer is almost, almost right. Because there are six conditions that need to be met in order to SQLite use indexes when like operator. And those conditions uh, combined together totally disqualify the like operator as a proper set solution. Uh, they didn't fit if I wanted to put them here, so. <clears throat> Here is the link in the presentation if, if somebody wants to look at it in, in a detail. Okay, so how to check what this query is exactly doing and why it's taking so long? There, there is a command uh, in the SQLite and it's called explain query plan. Uh, it's more recognized in some bigger uh, DBMSs like Oracle when they DB admin with a 12 years of experience, uh, checks, explain query plan for every single query that is locked uh, in the log file and checks if maybe something is working uh, bad so he can blame developers as a hobby. Uh, and surprisingly, explain query plan works also in our small DBMS, which is the SQLite. But in order to use the index, we need, for, we need by, by, by default set the pragma case sensitive like equal to one. By default, it's turned off. Uh, so uh, 
So like by default is case insensitive. And then we need to create an index, obviously, uh, on the column that we want to like. And we perform a query and notice place that this wildcard is only from the one side. What's the result? The index is used, covering index, and but approximately for 100,000 rows, 30% need to be visited in order to perform a query. So even if your index is used, it doesn't mean the query will be fast. This query is still slow. Uh, but if you add the wildcard from the second part, because for example, you got the column name uh, in your contacts and you want to uh, make your user able to find, fi find uh, contacts by the last name, and for some reason uh, you don't have the last name column, uh, then you need to perform something like this, right? Or you are looking for emails or notes, so you know the, only the keywords. And if you do it like this, the result is scan table deals, which, is, uh, which means that it's totally screwed. It won't work. And that was the result for our search in the first place, like three years ago. Mm, like is not the way to go, especially if you got some complicated views, complicated union queries, uh, complicated joins, or you concatenate the content uh, like this in the contacts, first name and last name, and you want to query, f query for it, you are dead if you are using like. Uh, interesting fact is what people think about the SQLite. If you ask people at the developer conference what they think about the SQLite and uh, what are their experiences with SQLite, Many people, not most, but many people will answer, yeah, you know, what's cool, I have a small DBMS and it's slow because it's running on slow device, blah, 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 right? Uh, the, but what SQLite really is, is a really powerful tool that offers developers really big set of functions that maybe are not really comparable to Oracle DBMS, but are never, always never, uh, uh, a bottom line in the case of performance in the Android app. If you write uh, proper queries to your SQLite, it's not likely that your application will die uh, because your queries are running slow. It's rather because uh, you are leaking the you are leaking the content some somewhere, right, or storing. Uh, data in, in, in wrong way or have indexes on uh, wrong fields. Well configured SQLite even on Android devices, on Android devices can, is really powerful tool. And it offers the native extension of the full text search free. Uh, the newest version of the SQLite already offers the version number four, uh, but the version number three is as well very good for search free pauses. And so uh, did you hear about it? Okay, great. Uh, how to create a, a such table? Uh, we need to use the uh, command in SQLite that is, used, that is called create virtual table. And then we put the regular name just we put in creating the normal tables. And then we put the using FTS3 and the list of columns. Please notice that the list of columns here is a single column that doesn't have any type. What will happen if we uh, insert the type here? What do you think? Error? Okay, what, how many people think that if this is working fine, this will be not working fine? Raise your hand. How many people think it will work fine? Okay, um, it doesn't sum up. <laughs> but yeah, it will work, but uh, SQLite will silently ignore your order and will create your, your uh, FTS table uh, with all the columns that are text, except for the hidden row ID that is, uh, uh, that is in every single uh, SQLite uh, table. Mm. What is the virtual table? It's not, of course, the Java interface, but imagine it is. It's like the interface that have the methods uh, insert, update, 
create table, article table, delete, stuff like this. Uh, that all, of course every single method uh, gets its own parents, right? And then the FTS3, uh, so the type of the native ex ex extension, type of the mechanism of the virtual table is like the implementation for this interface. So, for example, if you are creating the table using the FTS3 native exception, uh, native, uh, native extension, then under the hood, SQLite or native, uh, native code creates uh, free tables uh, that will be storing your tokens. But it's totally not visible for you. I mean, you can list them uh, from the SQLite master, but FTS manages uh, them um, automatically for you. You operate only on the table you created via the create virtual table, and under the hood, everything happens. Uh, FTS creates uh, special, uh, special indexes and proper fields, and special triggers, and everything is hidden from you, which is cool. Uh, who scored that goal? Another fact that I learned yesterday is that no one at the tech conferences uh, in Italy watches football. I, don't, I can't believe it. Guys, who scored this goal? Luca Toni? Marco Materazzi, right, this is the goal for one. One to one in the 2006. Uh, so and finally won that match. Uh, this guy, this uh, with ten from the France, was threw out from, from the pitch uh, in the draw game because he would did something like. And <laughs> then Materazzi did something like. So uh, yeah, that's the story. Uh, match. Uh, <laughs> match is a special keyword uh, that can be used for the FTS tables. How it works? We perform simply select everything from search where content matches something. And search, of course, is our FTS free table. And what's the result? Something, not something special, something written like in different, different cases. So as you can see, uh, no wildcards are needed, and FTS automatically will match uh, the rows that are corresponding to, to your phrase. Uh, what's more interesting, uh, we can do something like this. The, the string we put in the, uh, in the right, ha right hand side of the, uh, of the match operator is a special language that is understood by the FTS3 mechanism. It's like the internal language in our, in our SQL. So we can do something like this, and it will find uh, us uh, rows that contains separate words, or I should say separate tokens, when one of them starts from the sum and the second from SPE. Imagine the possibilities, how people are looking for their contacts on Android phones, how, how they can look uh, for, seek for, for their contacts. They can type the first three letters of the name and the first three letters on the last name and the result will appear, right? So it's a cool way of achieving such experience and it's out of the box on Android since AP level one. Uh, okay. Of course, we can have uh, many other fields in our FTS3 table. Let's say we got the author and we got the lyrics. And we want to find uh, matches uh, from our search table that have field author uh, named Giorgio and synthesizer in, uh, in lyrics. And we can get something like this. So if uh, you are storing, storing lyrics or the movie's transcripts uh, linked to your uh, to movie's title in your database, FTS is ideal solution. Cool? Let's look at this. What if you want to find only those emails in your inbox that have word Y near the word synthesizer? How, how can you write uh, such things using like? I cannot even imagine how slow it could be. In the SQLite, this query is performed 
under 30 milliseconds on Samsung Galaxy Ace <laughs> for 100,000 rows. No, not kidding. We got, we got the result like, uh, like this. I'm so stressed I didn't even start drinking my water. Yeah, that's, that's the result. Uh, and there are many, many other operators in the FTS3 that I couldn't even list and describe in, during the, uh, the 40 minutes. So you really want to go to the SQLite website, check what operators are possible, check, for example, for the FTS3 tokenizers. You know what is the FTS3 tokenizers? I, 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 mm, I was worried that I will run, will run on the, uh, from my time, but uh, so I didn't put the tokenizers uh, on my slides. But tokenizer is something like uh, you got the satisfied keyword, and some people who don't speak English or speak English so bad like me uh, are typing the satisfied using the C letter inside, and default tokenizer in the SQLite that is uh, mm, supported by default can automatically recognize that situation and can match your rows based on the pronunciation. So you want to, you want to go to the SQLite documentation and check things like this. They are working almost all the things uh, f uh, from uh, the FTS3 are working fine on Android. And a mm, few advices. Uh, FTS3 uh, table should contain only tokens. No uh, searchable ID, searchable type inside because you want to know the, uh, the uh, association of the given world with some entity that is in the system. If you want to do that, link your FTS table records with the other table using the row ID, this uh, mystery call hidden field in the FTS table link it with the other table, so it will contain the searchable ID, searchable type. So you, do, you have, for, uh, for example, a list of tokens that is associated with contact with ID 1012, right? This is easily achievable in, in the SQLite. And remember, FTS3 is fast enough for searching purposes, for providing the good experience of search to the end user. But it's always slower, and it's way slower, than the equation query on the indexed field. So, it will all, so if you, for example, run the query that runs on the F2S table that matches the rows that have a value five, it's much faster uh, to perform such queries on the, ta on the regular table with indexed column ID equal five. So this is the this is the another reason uh, why you shouldn't put such information in your uh, in directly in your if test table like the association between because you will use this table later uh, to drop this uh, to drop and no more needed uh, content rows from your FTS and if you will perform batch queries uh, that will match for for something like 2000 queries in in one transaction on the FTS it will work slow, obviously. And explain query plan doesn't work for FTS tables for the reasons I already explained that uh, FTS is really hidden under other tables that are automatically created by the SQLite when you reference for the FTS3. You can measure it using the timer, for example, and compare it to the like-based queries. Okay, questions time. That's all I got today. Questions, no worries. Hi. Um, does the match operator also take into consideration the order of the words? The order of? Like if you may, I don't know, name, surname. If you do surname, name, will it also match? Yes. Okay. This will work. Very cool. Uh, <laughs> the, the order of the tokens is, uh, is not defini defined. If you do not use the proper uh, operat operators from the FTS3, 
that are listed in documentation because you can care about the order for sure but it can be enabled using the FTS free operators but by default is disabled ah, okay thank you then our questions Um, what about uh, sentences? I mean, um, I would like to store uh, sentences in a database and search for, for them. Every word of the sentence must be saved in the table or I can just uh, put the sentence in the... You put the sentence and FTS3 extension automatically generates the tokens for that sentence. And those tokens are obviously created based on the spaces or white spaces but it's also based on the, on the dots, for example. So let's say that we got the pattern that every person from our company uh, got, the, got uh, an email in uh, format, first name, dot, last name, right? So what we can do and how can we find the match for this email in our FTS table is just to put the first name, space, last name, and in automatically find also those rows that has the dot uh, inside. Hi, you have shown the near operator, yeah. in the matcher. Uh, how much is the bound for the near? Oh, I didn't, sh I didn't, yeah, I didn't tell about, sorry. Uh, so, by default, it's 10. If you use just a near, it's 10. But, but you can define your own like this, putting the slash free. So it, tokens it, or uh, characters? Uh, tokens, just okay. tokens. Okay, thank you. No questions about size of my table? It doubles the size of your database. Uh, for us, it wasn't a problem uh, because the database of our biggest client has like 200 megabytes and we handle it gracefully. Uh, so, well, it's probably not a problem for, uh, for most of the apps. I didn't know any person, I don't know any person that, that have a problem with, uh, with the size of the FTS3 table that uses FTS3. Can you explain between the same way and the regular uh, SQLite database? I mean, uh, read the SQLite token as... Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, to create the FTS3 table, you just perform the SQL just like the other table creation, like create table contacts. So you just type create a uh, virtual table uh, using FTS3. And it works. we use it using the SQLite open helper uh, wrapped by content provider. And it works, uh, it works perfectly. What happens when you modify something on your DP? Uh, you mean the corresponding rows, yeah. like? Uh, so, this depends on your architecture. Of course, the pure DBA-based solution can use trigger for such thing, right? So you can set up a trigger on, for example, corresponding table with your proper rows, like contacts. And then after the contacts is being updated, by the link table I already mentioned, you, you, find, the, you find the row ID of the tokens in the FTS flurry table, and you perform delete and insert again. Uh, for for the new data you perform insert for the old data you perform delete and it and it works. Can you also create custom tokenizers? Yes, you can create custom co uh, tokenizers, but they are written in C, so you cannot do it in, using Java. Uh, well, you need. Personally, I don't have experience with writing the custom tokenizers, uh, but I guess uh, there is no easy way to um, to write your tokenizer uh, from the level of, from this from your app. So if you got the access to the operating system, is 
of course it's easy but from the app probably probably not possible but I don't know I don't don't have experience in such field okay so that's that's from my side if you got any further questions I will be today at the after party uh, <laughs> there is not <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Probably it is in blah blah, right? Yeah, there is. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. <laughs>